the Fantasy Six-Pack Hour. With your hosts, Joe Bob. Ah, you're awful. And A.J. Applegar. It's Sin Shu Sin Shu. It's a mouthful. All right, all right. Welcome to the Fantasy Six-Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, fan of FantasySixPack.net. With me as usual, AJ Abergarth. What is up, man? Uh, not too much. Not too much. Ready to roll. Been a been a long week so far. So glad yeah, it's Thursday. I feel you. I feel you, man. My son has decided that he is no longer taking naps, so I no longer get to take naps during the day, and it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's good stuff, man. Um, all right, let's let's roll into. It. So we've got a we got a really exciting show today. We're doing the outfield preview. Uh, a lot to cover. Definitely a lot to cover. Super deep. Um, and let's get a let's get started here with some injuries, though. Uh, jump into some news and notes. Big one to start with here. Chris Sale. You know, big scare there. Um, having to get sent for an MRI. You know, obviously finished the, the last uh, part of uh, 2019 on the IL with. Um, with an elbow injury, and you know, all you heard this off season was that he was fine. Then he had like pneumonia, so it was kind of like, eh. You know, you already knew he was going to start the season on the IR. Um, it's a DL, IL, IR. I have no idea anymore with baseball. Um, anyway, pretty sure it's back to IL. Is it IL? I don't ever. All right. So anyway, so he's going to start the season on the injury list, and then. Boom, like he threw like a side session or something and he had elbow soreness. So they sent him for MRIs and everybody's just going like, he's done. He's got to be done, right? Um, he had three opinions. Um, and they came back saying that he's got a flexor st- strain. Mm. There's no timetable for his return, but he's not getting Tommy John. So everybody, I guess, can that has drafted him, looking right at myself. <laughs> TGFBI drafted him 34th, which I thought was a hell of a bargain at the time. I'm like, he's going to miss like two weeks. Cool. Man, he's going to miss like two months. <laughs> I'm screwed. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, but I guess good news, I'll have him at least for, hopefully, at least for some of the season. I, I, it's just, who knows at this point, but... Um, Another big name pitcher who's got elbow problems is Blake Snell. Uh, now he got an injection on his elbow, uh, but he's expected to throw Friday. That's tomorrow, so hopefully he can get back on track and ready for the season. Um, I think they're kind of saying hopefully he's got enough time to make it, but it seems like it's kind of close for a pitcher at this point. I will say I, I heard Stefania Bell on uh, SiriusXM yesterday maybe yeah and she was saying that you know a lot of people are freaking out because obviously he got an injection on his elbow and but the main thing to take away which you and i or most people wouldn't figure out is that it was on the outside of his elbow which means it had nothing to do with like the you know the the ligaments that give tommy john and things like that so or require tommy john so that's the really good news um Bad news is that he's just injured. <laughs> so hopefully it's not super serious and doesn't keep him out for too long. Uh, another guy that I haven't seen an update from, but I'll be perfectly honest, I hadn't checked the last few hours today, is Griffin Canning, a guy who some people thought was going to be like a, a good sleeper candidate this year. Uh, Angels pitcher. He's getting a second opinion on his elbow. Again, another GGFBI candidate of mine. Uh, draftee of mine, I mean. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys, because, you know, I've I've realized over the last few years, uh, whoever I draft in industry leagues get hurt. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't have luck with those leagues. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the Snell Snell one definitely hurts for me because he was my potential keeper in one of my leagues as like a 17th rounder or something, which I still will probably do it. Yeah, I was gonna say you still might need you still might want to. I don't really have much better value than that. So no, it's pretty he just, he totally hurt me last year though. So we'll see. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to look up the whole Griffin canning thing real quick. I know it's not a huge name, but 
Um, I had I had some hope for him this season, and the site is pulling up super super slow, and it's still just saying the, the same news from yesterday. So so nothing updated. So all right, man. Well, let's uh, we've we've got more injury updates, but there's some outfielders, so we'll cover those as we get going on. But before we introduce our guest to help, let's get into beer of the week, man. Yes, please. Mm, beer. Yeah, it sounds like you need it as bad as me. Um, what you got? So tonight I am drinking part two of the beers that I bought for last week. Uh, it is a Lagunitas Hazy Memory IPA, eight right. percenter, sixteen ounce can. Uh, I did actually have one since uh, I bought them, so I already know that it tastes very good, and uh, I'm a fan. I think right. I gave it a four, maybe a four and a quarter on untapped. I'll have to check when I log this one in. But let's go ahead and ah, uh, yeah, crack it open. Nice. I um, I found this at the place where I think we're gonna watch some college basketball in a couple of weeks. Uh, Brew Belly here in Olney, Maryland. Um, it's a True Respite Experimental Release Number Two. Uh, it's a it's a pretty solid beer, man. It's it's got um, oh what. I forget which hops it has in it. It had it written somewhere. Um, I don't know. It's a hazy IPA though. It, it's definitely kind of frothy. Um, and as I'm reading the uh, description now, I say I it makes total sense because it contains lactose. <laughs> so if you're lactose intolerant, do not drink this. That'll beer. do it. Um, so yeah, but but it's good though. It gives it a little creamy feel to it. Um. But, you know, it's hazy at the same time. It's kind of a, a good mix, uh, something I would have never thought. But it's Centennial and Zappa hops are the ones that are in there, too. Um, it's dry hopped as well, which is interesting. Nice. So it's just it's just a weird, like, combination that you don't find a lot of places, but but it's good. I gave it a four. Um, strangely enough, with all of that, it's only a six. Uh, I thought it would have been a lot more. I was actually surprised to see it be six. Mm-hmm. But it's, uh, it's definitely a good one, and I would buy it again for sure. So... Um, excellent excellent as i forgot to change the slide i'm already slacking today on this one so let me move some stuff i, I didn't so even I, notice so, so. I, so i don't forget uh, i can't even i can't totally even uh, slack throw in my so all right let's bring on our guest uh we got mike oh, man i already forgot how to pronounce it man uh salacito salacito thank you i'm there you go names uh mike salacito from fantasy six pack uh a new writer we've got this this year uh he's contributed already to doing the the outfield preview uh he's done the quality starts target and he did the fsga draft analysis uh part one and two which took from aj this oh, nice. year. so uh did great well, thank work you for taking all, that <laughs> yeah he did great no work problem. on all of those and i uh, look forward to seeing what he you know, continues writing for us. Um, how's it going, Mike? Going good. Going good. Excited for the uh, the show tonight. Yeah, man. Um, we got a lot to cover, so let's just jump right into it, man. Uh, sure. Outfield preview. So I start with a little draft strategy, and then you guys can chime in and, you know, agree, disagree, whatever you want to do. Um, so draft strategy, right? Outfielders, the the top group are so good, right? Like if you can land a Trout and a Cunha, a Yelich, those guys, even a Betts in the first round, you absolutely do it, right? After that, I'm kind of the opinion that I'm okay waiting quite a while for outfield. Um, I might sprinkle them in here and there, like you know, if somebody falls, but. I think I'm going to be more focused on filling my infield first this year, unless I land one of those top guys. It's just the rest of the group. They're all very good. There's so many good players, but they don't difference. They don't distance themselves from each other. In my opinion. Um, You know, I'll also say this outfield is a position where you're going to find a gamut of skill sets you're going to find guys who are really good in average really good at power really good at steals you know maybe a mix of everything you're going to find guys that are kind of right in the middle they're just kind of okay at all of it which are safe good players to have every now and then but you know i've i still just think like my overall strategy is just going to be 
not truly waiting. Like I'm not going to wait till like round 10 to start filling my outfield, but you know, I'm not going to like fill five of my, all four or five of my outfield spots before I fill, you know, the very weak second base position. I'm probably grabbing one of those high end second basemen way before I grab a guy who is an outfielder who is probably better overall, but I could, replace him with a guy around or two later who the diff the difference between around or two later and second baseman is massive compared to the out- difference in outfield. So it's kind of a best of like um, value based drafting really with outfielder that I do. So I don't know, Mike, what do you, what do you think about that? Um, I actually, I, I really agree with that. Honestly, you know, I would say definitely try to grab, you know, depending if you're in a, a four outfielder or five outfielder league, I would say definitely try to grab at least one outfielder up until like maybe pick like, you know, 60, just because I feel like up until around like Springer type people, right. um, I agree. you know, I would be fine with them being like my outfield one. Um, so I would definitely try to get one of those, but I agree like kind of after that, there's a, not that there's a big, uh, you know, fall off a cliff in value, but it's just that you're right. The other positions are pretty weak, like first base, second base, um, and honestly, even third base is not as deep as some years have been. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I would definitely agree with maybe trying to grab one of those other positions, especially infield, just because you know you can grab guys later in the draft, like you know David Peralta to fill your fifth outfielder spot. And to, not even two years ago, we hit 30, 30 plus home runs. That dude is like free this year, by the way. I'm in a couple. Exactly. I'm in a couple of industry drafts right now, and we grabbed David Peralta. Like I completely forgot about him. I saw him at the bottom of the ADP and was like, oh, yeah, damn, I forgot about him. Yeah, he was injured last year, so everybody's just like, goodbye. Like, yeah. what? Okay, thanks. Plus, they've yeah. got Starling Marte, Cattell Marte, like a breakout yeah. Cattell Marte in the lineup. Yeah. And all the other pieces they have, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. AJ, you got anything else to add to that? or? Uh, no, pretty much hit it hit it right on the head there. I mean, I, I definitely like going after one of these top guys if it falls right for me draft-wise. They have draft... Uh, slot wise so if not i don't i don't mind waiting a few rounds and trying to get get some of these other positions uh like you guys said i I definitely want to try to build my infield um get get some good depth there and then then look for outfield absolutely so all right mike so we're we're gonna throw a little curve by i know i i I know i sent you the questions earlier but i added one last second it's an easy one don't worry about it who out of these top three that I mentioned already, right? Acuna, Trout, Yelich, whatever order you put them in. Who is if you have the number one overall pick? Who are you picking and why? I know this might sound kind of crazy, but I'm going Acuna with this reasoning only. Well, not this only only reasoning. Obviously, he's a great player, but the stolen base upside is just immense, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. He has the absolute raw power. And I think that he has quite a, a little bit of a better lineup than Yelich. And, you know, Trout obviously has the amazing power, but he hasn't been stealing as many bases lately. And plus, Acuna said he wants to be the first person to have a 50-50 season. Ugh. Come on, wow. someone with that kind of determination yeah. on your team. I mean, I know, obviously, you know, saying it is a lot harder than doing it. But, you know, he has that in his sights. And I honestly think that with his talent and, you know, with the way he was hitting the ball last year, it's not out of the realm of possibilities. Yeah. Very, very talented player. AJ, I'll let you give your opinion first before I give mine. Uh, <laughs> Put you on the uh, spot. <laughs> I'd, I'd probably still go Trout. Um, just because, uh, he, I mean, he's such a known quantity and he's done it for so long. Uh, I mean, last year you still rode him deep in you know into your playoff run well i know he was injured for that last month but he still got you there and then you carried it without him so i still just think he's, i also had he's acuna just, so that's okay well yeah <laughs> that helps but uh, yeah it, it wasn't really that much of a drop off <laughs> but um losing for trial still sucks the but yeah. 98 other percent of teams that don't have both of these guys uh yeah I, I think you just you just go with trout and you know what you're getting and, and just be happy with it so mine's gonna be i got two answers 
and <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you why. So number one, Acuna. I agree in category leagues, right? Um, head to head categories, roto leagues, for exactly the reason why Mike said the stolen base upside. Yes, you're gonna get a little less power, a little less average from Acuna than Trout, um, but getting the getting the steals is massive in today's game, and we've talked about that. We talked about it on the on the very first podcast of the season, um, where just steals are down every single year. They're down again, and Acuna is a guy that's gonna likely get you thirty, maybe forty. Who knows? Maybe fifty. Maybe 50. Uh, <laughs> yeah. In a points league, though, it's Trout and it's Trout all day. In a in a normal kind of points league, like most points leagues are very power heavy, power skewed, right? Um, steals are very devalued in points leagues, so that's where Acuna drops. And and I've even in my own, I have a, a head to head points league. Okunia isn't even the second ranked player in the league. In fact, he's like number eight for projections, right? I use like Steamer or ATC or, or whatever it is, right? Um, he's like number eight. He's behind like guys like JD Martinez, even. And JD Martinez gets a massive jump because his power is immense. Um, so that's where I go, Trout. So that's why I had two answers. It depends on the league a little bit, but. Yeah, in the in most leagues that I play in, which are category based, it's Acuna, and mainly because of steals. But Trout would be number two at a very close number two. Um, all right, moving on. AJ, what you got? Uh, all right. So uh, clearly, we've talked about this guy a ton already this year because of this trade to the Dodgers. But Mookie Betts, uh, you know. We, we've pretty much given our opinion of him uh, being in in LA now. Uh, Michael, how do you think he'll he'll fare out there? Better, worse, the same as as what he did in Boston? Um, I would say that we perhaps could see him do a little bit better. Um, I know that's kind of you know old in a sense because Fenway is a lot easier of a park to hit at than um in Dodger Stadium. However, um. You know, he, he hits the ball hard. He's going to be leading off for them. They have a, an amazing lineup. And, you know, he's a great player in his prime who last year didn't really steal many bases, but he has great sprint speed. Um, and I think that the Dodgers haven't really had a type of person like this, that like on the bases. You know, like I can't really think of one on their team that really steals that many bases at the moment. I don't know if I'm missing one. I mean, but I feel like team last year, which guy, was kind of surprising. But yeah, no, I, I I generally agree with you. They don't run a lot. Yeah, like I, I was looking um I was looking it up, and I think last year they had like bottom five uh, steals, like a, an average of steals per game with like point four, and like the Red Sox were like a little bit better than that. But I still think that you know with his speed and just the way that the Dodgers handle their players, they just seem to know what they're doing, and I just think that. You know, he'll steal a few more bases than he did last year. And plus, you know, with that great average and the power that he has, and he'll definitely score over 100 runs. You know, I think so, he'll do great. So you think, uh, even though he does run, obviously, LA doesn't. I mean, is that going to affect him? Or do you think they're still going to try to utilize? his speed knowing that that he he can run and he can steal 20 bags in a year yeah i think i think that they will definitely definitely try to use his speed um to their advantage you know especially with the leadoff spot just how deep their lineup is behind him you know they'll want to move him up on base just to be able to score those easy runs in the first and the second you know get an early lead especially with their deep pitching staff they should be able to have a great year this year overall yeah, I, I think the only thing that you can counter with that, and I bet a lot of people would agree with, and I don't know if I do, is you know the fact that because it's such a good lineup behind him, that you don't run him, right? You don't want that extra out because you expect Bellinger, you expect Max Muncy, you expect these guys to be able to bat, hit him in. So if he gets out trying to go to second, that's a, that's one less run. That's true. Because they're going to hit a home run. So there is a counter argument to that. I don't know which I totally agree on right now. You know, I, I, 
I think the best owner in me in one in my dynasty league hopes that he steals thirty again. Yeah, but I don't think we're I don't think we're gonna ever see it again. I just don't. I think the, yeah, the I think ball is juiced. Too much. I think the ball yeah. is juiced. Um, and he's in such good lineups. You know, last year JD Martinez bat behind him. You know, th- there's no reason to run him as often as he used to in the past. But anyway, moving on here to another guy that has moved teams recently in the last couple of years. Um, Bryce Harper. So, you know, when you look at the end, his, his final stats in 2019, they were good. 35 home runs, 114 RBI, uh, bad at 260, which isn't great, but Hey, it was actually an improvement from 2018. Um, you know, he, he stole, well, I have that number here, but it's not on the screen. He stole 15. So like overall, great at the end. The problem was is that you know he was still labeled a bust, and there's a couple of reasons for that. One, the contract, right? So everybody's expecting him to hit 50, you know, 120 RBIs, you know, bat 300. Like, okay, guys, relax. Um, yeah. The the first, the other, the other reason though is that his first half was pretty dismal. I I owned him in a league last year, um, and his first half was a disaster. He he batted. In his first four months with the Philly alone, right, his slugging and OPS tell the story. First half was 470 and 840. Second half was 564 and 941. Now, I get it. Like, that first half isn't bad, but it's not what you expect from a first, second round pick in Bryce Harper. So I ask you, Mike, which Bryce Harper are we going to get this year in Philly? I think we see more of the second half, Bryce Harper. Um, I don't know if it's to that extent as to what he did last year, but I do think that, you know, he's a better player than he's been letting on. Um, You know, again, he's another guy that punishes the ball every time he hits it. Um, His strikeout rate has been kind of creeping up a little bit over the years, which is a bit of a problem Mm -hmm. um, because pitchers have kind of been pitching differently to him. They've noticed that he chases a lot more pitches than other people do. So they've kind of been taking that to an advantage. However, he does kind of counter that with his walks. He walks quite a bit and a lot of, teams intentionally walk in because you know they don't want to pitch to Bryce Harper um but I do think that is especially with um the lineup this year I know that it hasn't really changed as much as uh, it did um you know last year when they brought in a bunch of different pieces but you know you have a healthy McCutcheon now you have a Didi Gregorius who I think you can see bounce back mm-hmm. um you know and I think that they just have an overall solid lineup and um I think that you'll be able to see you know possibly 100 runs 100 RBIs and around 30 home runs. And I know the average may not be as high as it was, um, especially in 2017. But I do think that, you know, you could see him hit around 260, possibly even hitting into the 270s. Um, I think he had around a two... He had a 280 expected batting average last year. So, you know, he he wasn't given enough credit um, as he should have been. But, you know, I don't know if he'll hit that high, but I do think that he's a better player than he's been letting on and definitely more of the second half player that we saw last year. Yeah, AJ, yeah. I mean, AJ's being great. the resident Phillies <laughs> fan, I, I should just abstain now. But yep, <laughs> no, I, just move I, on, uh, AJ. We're done. <laughs> uh, yeah. Next you got, question. You got your Phillies uh, in. Yeah, I mean, this Get lineup it. is is definitely solid. I, I think they're gonna bounce back pretty well, and I, and I think he's gonna start carrying, you know, the that second half that he had it really start off this year with it. I mean, you look at look at last year's off season versus this year's off season, and it's completely different. Um, you know, last year it was him and Manny just sitting and waiting forever and not playing. Obviously, the the two of them don't have to deal with that this year, but a lot of these other players don't either. I mean, free agency just moved uh, this That's year, and thankfully it was nice. So, you know, Philly went out and they got Didi. Um, you know, they have, uh, like you said, healthy McCutcheon coming back. He, he might still might not start the season, um, with, with the big club, but nah, you know, it should be back in April, um, late April or so. So that'll be a nice boost. And, you know, they've got, they've got other pieces there. Segura's is playing really well so far, which we talked about last week. And, you know, I, I think, I think Harper's just going to make everybody realize okay yeah he, he's worth this contract and he he can do this 
So, all right. Uh, looking at our next question here, we've got Mr. Aaron Judge and Giancarlo Stanton. So the, they're not really bombers right now because <laughs> they're bombing for their teams and being injured. Uh, both of these guys are right now expected to miss at least half of April. Judge is dealing with the shoulder injury, stand with a calf strain now. I mean, are you touching either of these guys in drafts or do you just let them be somebody else's problem? Um, you know, just just as a quick reference point, Judge's NFBC ADP over the last couple of days is 70 with a high of 101. Stan is at 82 with a high of 109. So what say you, Michael? Um, as a Yankee fan, this kills me because, <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> you know, these are two guys that should be in the lineup and making our lineup one of the best. And I mean, you know, even with the injuries that it still is, but that's besides the point. Um, you know, I think that with them falling that low, I would say I would definitely be depending on how my team is shaking out. If I have a very consistent lineup that I'm, you know, very confident in you know i've taken very safe players that i think their floors are pretty high um i would definitely you know throw a dart at one of these two uh depending on who's there i would probably take judge over stanton just because i know this might sound a little weird but judge is a little bit less injury prone than stanton even though they're both pretty injury prone at this point in their career um but you know stanton he missed all of last year and again with the recurring uh calf injury just you know uh no bueno but I, I did see that Judge has a possibility of playing on opening day. You know that report he came out today. I don't believe it. it. But yeah, it's. I, I think I that just that's either. just him wanting to play baseball. Yeah, me too. I don't think that it really has any of the medical staff involved. Um, yeah. but yeah, I would say depending on where they fall and depending on how you know my lineup is, I would definitely throw a dart at, you know, one of them. Otherwise, you know, especially Stanton, I could see letting him kind of be someone else's problem. You know, I actually I recently did a. Uh, a $25 buy-in, uh, 16 team league. And I drafted Stanton before the news came out that he was injured. Oh. And so now I just got to stick him on the IL. Luckily I picked up Clint for, uh, Frazier though. So nice. good work there. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, like I, I haven't touched Stanton in years and like I, I missed out on the couple, you know, blow up years, but you know, this dude's been injured. It feels like, almost every year of his career. He had problems in Miami, and I know some of those were flukes, like, you know, he got hit in the face, yeah, you know, stuff like that. But it's just like, now it's now it's the... And, and it, look, I gave him a pass on the ones where, you know, he got hit in the hand, hit in the face. Those aren't injuries you can predict. Those aren't reoccurring injuries. Those are flukes. I gave him a pass on those. But I still kind of stayed away. I was just like, this guy's got bad luck or something. I didn't know what was going on. I just stayed away. Now they're soft tissue injuries. They're quads. Their groins, their calves, you know, hamstring, whatever, right? Soft tissue injuries, uh, they're very reoccurring. They're hard to really get over fully, except not playing for a long time. <laughs> so uh, Stanton, I am just, he would have to drop to like, 14th, 15th round for me to even take a chance on him. I just don't want anything to do with Stanton. I just, he would basically have to be a zero risk player for me. Somebody that I could find replacement value for a round 14 player and be like, okay, whatever. But he's not falling that far. Um, Judge, on the other hand, is somebody who, if he falls to around like eight or nine, I might take a chance. Cause like you just said, he's still like trying to come back. It, 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 we don't, we don't know the true extent of the shoulder injury, um, but it, it doesn't sound as doesn't sound super serious. Not that Stanton sounds super serious, but Stanton just being as injury prone and having all these soft tissue injuries over the years just scares me away. But Judge is somebody who I think I would take in like round eight or nine if if he fell to me. But he probably won't fall that far to me either. So whatever, I won't have either of these guys. I'll be okay with it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't see myself owning either of them um uh, if i had to pick i i think i would agree with both you guys i'd rather go with judge over stanton um and, and I, I mean i love stanton I, I think he's just such an incredible player when he's on the field it's just that he's never on the field so 
I'd rather just let, you know, the, the Yankee fan in my leagues take them. <laughs> no, no offense, Michael, but I know there's plenty out there that'll be like, yes. Oh, I don't care. I'm going for it. It's like, absolutely. Okay. All right. Moving on here. So Jordan Alvarez, uh, look, I know he's not off field eligible. He's only DH this year. You know, I, I'm sure there's some leagues out there where he is, but I threw him on here because I need to be able to talk about this guy. And this is the only place we could. Um, so I'm cheating a little bit. Sorry. I apologize. Um, but Hey, Cheating with an Astro? Hmm. I know, right? <laughs> Interesting. Glad somebody caught that. Thank you. Um, so anyway, this guy, he was the mid-season pickup of the year last year. Um, I, you know, I, I snagged him in TGFBI. I had like, my team was dead. I had like 15 injuries in the first two months. My team was dead. I had like $600 of the fab. I was like, screw it. I'm taking Alvarez. And I did it. I got him. I was like, oh, I feel, kind of feel bad because I'm sure the people in my league that were actually good and had a chance probably were pissed. Sorry about that, guys. Anyway, his um, in 87 games, he hit 27 home runs, 78 RBI. His slash line was 313, 412, and 655. Out of this world, good. Projections this year, though, they honestly aren't as kind as I thought they would be. You know, in a full season, they're only projecting him the high is 39, which is okay, but the low is like 33, which I'm like, what? In a in 60 more games, 70 more games, he's only going to hit five more home runs. I don't know about that, guys. Yeah, I seriously thought we would see projections in the low to mid 40s. Uh Mike, what do you think about Alvarez? I mean, do you project him to have, you know, that kind of power or like in the 30s or in the 40 power? And then a little second question to this is, where do you draft him knowing that he's only got DH utility eligibility in the vast majority of leagues? All right. So um, I'll talk about the first question first. I think that I think that he is more of the – 40 home run type guy. He just, he has incredible power. And I know with the Astros and the cheating, that might have helped them a little bit. But, I mean, this dude was just tearing up AAA. He was just, you know, he was amazing when he came up last year. I just, I I think that it's just, it, it's who he is. You know, my, my closest comparison to him is, you know, Nelson Cruz. I think that that's kind of, you know, what he can really be. And I'm perfectly fine with taking a DH only person as long as my league has utility because I'll just toss him in there and I won't have to worry about my utility for you know God knows how long and I'm fine with doing that knowing that I'm going to get 40 plus home runs at Alvarez and I, I do think that that's going to happen this year and you know 100 RBIs is definitely a guarantee um, I don't know where the average falls because he does strike out quite a little bit more than you'd probably like um, but you know I, I just think that hitting in that lineup you know especially with the power he has you just you got to take him and I think that where he's going despite his um DH only eligibility, you know, he's he's worth it. Like I said, just plug right into your utility and worry about it later. Yeah, AJ, hang on one second before you go because then you're going to go into the next question I know. I will say about his average, I almost guarantee he's not hitting 313 again. I would put money on the fact no. that he doesn't, that he barely cracks, that he doesn't crack 300 again. Because um, you're right, he strikes out a lot and that's going to catch up to him. But I think he hits the ball so hard that his average is going to stay well over 275 probably in the 280s you're seeing all the projections on the screen high you know mm -hmm. anywhere between 276 and you know 287 i i would i totally agree with that i think just because of the way he hits the ball he's just going to get on base a lot his his obp is going to be you know crazy good so because of it yeah i just I, I'm I'm probably staying away from this guy this year too. Um, a because he is only DH eligible, so I can't even remember the last time I actually owned somebody that was only DH eligible uh, for you know a few weeks, let alone a full season. But uh, I mean, the power's there; it's it's obviously real. But I, I think his average regression um, is is gonna hurt that power overall and. Uh, yeah, I, I think that that home run rate is kind of weird. The, like you said, just only six more and X amount more games. I don't know. So, 
moving on. Um, speaking of breakouts, though, let's uh, let's talk a, a little Jorge Soler. Uh, man, this guy, this guy was ridiculous last year. Uh, I mean, he was always touted as a solid prospect. Never really amounted to anything in the majors, but last year he blows up for 48 homers. Okay, 36 more than his previous career high. Um, I mean, what what was the reason for this, and and can it be repeated, Michael? Um, I would say the reason for this was just you know he just kind of stopped you know chasing those pitches that he always did earlier in his career. You know, he granted he still struck out a little bit more than you'd like. Um, you know, right around 26%, but it wasn't, you know, around the thirties, like it was a lot of times in, uh, the earlier parts of his career. And, you know, I think striking out just that little bit less, you know, he's another guy that has that raw power when he makes contact with the ball. Um, my only downside with him is that, um, one second, sorry. Um, <laughs> all good. So my only downside with him is that, you know, he hits a lot of fastballs. And my problem is that I wonder if pitchers are going to catch up to that and kind of understand that and start throwing more off-speed pitches to him that he really can't attack that well. You know, you look at his splits and he hits well over uh, 300 against um, fastballs, but he hits barely over 220 against, uh, you know, breaking and off-speed pitches. So... I, I worry that they're going to start throwing uh, a few more of those to him, and that's kind of really going to you're going to see his strikeout rate kind of spike up again. Um, but I do think that the power is there, and depending on where he falls, I might take him. But he's not someone that I'm definitely going after in drafts. I'm not sure. I do think the power is a little bit repeatable, but I'm not sure to the same extent as last year. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure 40 is not happening again for him. Yeah. Um, look, I, I I found some pretty crazy stats when I looked it up because I was kind of like I was looking at fan graphs and was like man I'm, I'm really not seeing anything so drastically different from his 2018 year to 2019 right and yet he was just incredible besides the fact that he was injured like and that's been his bugaboo right like he's been injured so often in his career um and he strikes out a lot so when he's out there he just strikes out and when he's and you know, but this guy was a top prospect. He was like a top 25 prospect for many, many years until he finally got the call. Um, but the things that I found, right? So exit velocity, right? It was up three miles per hour. Okay, not crazy, but I mean, that makes a difference. Uh, it was 11th best last year at 92.5%. So obviously 3% makes a bigger difference than you, prob- than you probably think it does. Um, launch angle increased from... 10.9 to 15.4 percent insane um his hard hit rate was up and he barreled an insane amount of balls 70 um but that was tied for the most in in all of baseball last year um and that was also on 10.6 percent of his plate appearances which was seventh best last year this guy was out of this world good I do not buy into one season breakouts after being in the majors for five years. Am I wrong sometimes? Absolutely. But I'm right more that I'm wrong on that. And I will not have him this year unless he drops in rank in drafts and he is not falling in drafts. I've already done a couple and he's getting snagged way earlier than I want him. Um, a he's been injury prone. He's on a really bad offense. So if he doesn't just smash the ball, he's not giving you counting stats. It's a period. So, Jorge Soler, I think you're a fine player, but you will not be on any of my teams this year. Yeah, I I like the guy. I've had him, you know, plenty of times over the years. Most of it has been for like one of his hot streaks where he just starts mashing. Last year it ascended to be, you know, the the whole year. The entire um, season. <laughs> It's like, okay, well, when am I get to drop this guy? I need this roster spot. I need somebody else, or I'm trying to pick this this player up. Um you couldn't you just couldn't get rid of him last year and and nor would you have wanted to um but yeah i don't i don't think i'll end up owning him this year just because i feel like someone's going to jump on these stats and and ride it and just think that it's it's absolutely happening again um i think he could be close i I think he could hover right around 40 but um maybe finish 
you know, about 10 shy of what he hit last year. So uh, I probably won't, won't end up. I will say this. I got to give credit to uh, Tyler Thompson, uh, who, by the way, finished eighth in draft in the fancy pros draft rankings uh, yeah, last season. Uh, awesome. Second year Congrats, in the top 10, he was top five, two years ago. I want to say, um, I, think so. I don't remember. Anyway, um, I was I just happened to read his this year's Max Muncie article from last year. Um and he, you know, basically that article was trying to pinpoint the guys who could be, you know, power breakout players. He put Jorge Soler in there and mentioned the fact that I think AJ probably when you owned Soler in 2018 was during June July-ish range when yeah. he was on like he hit like 12 home runs and then he got hurt with a toe yeah, it was and he was done. So you, you like people saw it coming, right? Like it was, it was there, but I don't know. I just, I didn't buy into it as much as I guess Tyler did, but so be it. All right. So we already mentioned one rookie in, in Jordan Alvarez. We got a second one here. Eloy Jimenez, um, you know, big time prospect, um, you know, right up there with Vlad Guerrero, right. Who, uh, we've talked about in previous shows, but, Jimenez started off pretty slow last year, uh, six home runs through May. Uh, he was on the IL a couple of different times, I believe. You know, in the end, though, if you look at his total numbers, pretty nice rookie year for, especially for fin- for missing a few games. Um, you know, thirty-one home runs total. The second half was really the story of his season, though. You know, he hit he hit fifteen home runs, um, hit two ninety-two with a. a a WRC plus of uh, 120, you know, that, that's up there with some of the, the best bats in the game. So, <coughs> excuse me, Mike, what do, you know, what can we expect from him in his, in year two? Uh, right off the bat with this guy, you know, I feel like he chose all the guys that uh, <coughs> they'll smoke the ball when they hit him, And, you know, he's just another example of that. Um, you know, the lineup greatly increased from last year. You know, they brought in Yasmani Grandal, mm-hmm. they got Edwin, yeah. Um, they brought back uh, Jose Bray, who I know he was there last year, but they re-signed him. Um, you know, they're going to have Luis Robert most likely in their opening day uh, lineup. So you know, they have all the all the pieces in their lineup, and it's it's a pretty solid lineup. So I do think that you know you see the the, uh, the counting stats, the you know the RBI runs, especially to uh, to be up there. And I I do think that the power is there. I I, I could see him you know hitting. I'd say definitely 30 plus or right around there. I could see him, you know, maybe pushing 40, uh, depending on his health. You know, I know, right. I know he wasn't very healthy last year. Um, average wise, you know, I don't know if it's what we saw in the second half hitting 292. I, I'd say he's probably right around, you know, I'd say maybe 265, 270 ish type hitter. Um, again, he's another guy that strikes out a bit more than you probably want him to. Um, but most power guys do, you know, they're swinging for the fences for a reason. They have that power. Um, but I do think that, you know, I think that he's just he he'll be a great overall player this year, and you're going to see him, you know, only develop more and more as he uh, he makes his way through the majors. Yeah, he's got to hope he stays healthy. AJ, what do you think? Yeah, I, I like Eloy's upside for sure this year. Um, I, I mean, the, the the stats clearly are, are there. I mean, uh, you know, the power is there. Um, We've talked about Chicago being a better team this year anyways. Uh, I, I just think that, that he's in a really good spot with a, a lot of young, good players around him. Um, so I think I think he's definitely going to be worth worth his uh, his ADP right now. So my thoughts on him. Um, all right, next guy we got here. Mr. Max Kepler, uh, he had himself quite the breakout year as well, hitting 36 homers, scoring 98 runs, and he's sitting atop that powerful Twins lineup that we've been talking about week in and week out on the show. So, you know, he'll be right there again this year, um, but he's only being drafted around uh, 143 or so this year. Uh, I mean, what do you think of that, Michael? Is that Are you reaching a bit higher to get him or are you going to see if he kind of falls in line with that and just snag him then I'd see if he falls in line with that and snag him then you know this kind of goes into what Joe said earlier in the show where you can get a lot of good outfielders kind of later in the rounds 
And, you know, this is a great example of, you know, you can wait a few rounds and you're still getting the leadoff hitter for the Twins, who only improved their lineup, which was great last year, and they made it somehow even greater this year. <laughs> and, you know, he's a guy that he doesn't strike out much. He has a great eye. He's, he's you know, he may not be a prototypical leadoff hitter, but he got, he's a guy that gets on base and, you know, he'll score the runs. And, you know, the power is there. He, he may not be, you know, a 40-type hitter, but I, I would definitely say you could see him in the 25 to 30, maybe even pushing a little bit higher like you saw last year. But I would say that probably 36 home runs is probably right around his cap. You know, I don't see him really hitting much more than that. But, you know, like you said, the lineup is great. And, uh, you know, he's just consistently get on base. Maybe not in the uh, the average department, but definitely for uh, OBP. He'll be, uh, he'll be great. Yeah, you, yeah. Said a, you said a lot of the things I was going to say where uh, average, I, I you know, he's going to probably be right there where he was last year, if not maybe a little lower. You know, his bad bit was 244, which isn't good. Like, it's kind of scary to think it was actually higher than it was in 2018. So that average is probably dipping if he doesn't approve that. Um, you know, OBP leagues, which is where I grabbed him last year in the fantasy six-pack league, um, his OBP is great because, like you said, he walks a lot and doesn't strike out. So it's fantastic. The power is not going to probably reach 30 this year. I've, I've got him plugged into around like 28 max. Um I just, I mean, he hit like 18 more than he did in 2018. I just don't see it happening again. But that offense is so good that if he keeps the OBP clip up, his runs are going to be nearing 100 again, and uh, that's going to be super valuable. I, I'd probably reach, uh, I'd be willing to reach a round or two ahead, depending on how my team has been setting up. Um, especially since I am kind of willing to wait on on outfielders. Like I want to take somebody like a Kepler who I can count on um he's in the range he's in the range with a lot of guys that are kind of like upside plays and i think kepler's going to be a target of mine because i know he's going to be consistent yeah i mean we talk about consistency all the time Mm -hmm. with football bob long baby it's the same (laughs) it's the same as uh same as baseball you still need your players to perform and to perform often uh and well so uh, looking at the slide here, it brings us into our next question here with um, Andrew Benatendi. So this time last year, he was being drafted like he was going to be the next Christian Yelich. Um, I mean, this is a guy who had the overall game, still kind of coming into his into his power a little bit more. Um, you know, to say that didn't really work out is a gross understatement. Um, Mike, what are your thoughts on on Benatendi this season? Does he get back to closer to what he was doing in 2018 uh, or, or maybe better uh, like we all expected last year or is 2019 who he is? You know, he was what he is probably one of the tougher players to kind of look at this year just because of how different his seasons have kind of, you know, have come out to be, you know, over the past uh, couple of them. But, you know, last year he did strike out a little bit more than um you know he previously did so you know his eye wasn't as good uh, at the plate as it normally is and he does have a track record he actually i'm pretty sure he was a, like a great uh hitter in the uh the minors especially with uh you know his uh batting eye but um he did have a little bit of an injury last year you know i'm pretty sure th- uh towards the end of the year a lot of times they kept hitting him because he had something called like dead legs um, I don't know if that kind of was a, something that happened throughout the year that he kind of had. And then at the end of the year, they were like, hey, we're not really in it. Um, let's just rest you, make, you know, make sure that you're healthy for next year and everything. But, you know, I do think that that could have had a little bit of an effect on um, what his final stats came out to be. Um, but overall, I would probably say that he's probably going to fall somewhere right in between his 2018 and 2019 season. Um just looking at it where it is, he, I mean, it's definitely possible that he fully bounces back. Um, don't get me wrong. And, you know, he's, he, right now he's the leading candidate, candidate to be the leadoff man uh, for the Red Sox after Mookie was traded. So, you know, that, that he does have something going for him there. Um, and it'd be nice to, for him to finally have a consistent spot in the lineup. You know, they've been consistently, you know, shuffling out him throughout the lineup, you know, whether it's second or eighth or, you know, they've been throwing him up and down just because, you know, he hasn't been very consistent. But I do think that if he's given a consistent spot on the lineup, you know, he I, I think that he falls in between his 2018 and 2019, but I do think that he has a little bit upside for more just because of, you know, the highly the kind of highly title prospect that he was 
And, you know, he's still so young. And like you said, developing into his power, you know, there is a little bit of optimism for hope. Yeah. What do you think, Joe? Oh, man. I, uh, I honestly, I didn't write a lot of, I didn't write any notes for this guy because I didn't know where to go. Uh, and I think, my, Mike, you summed it up perfectly when you said he is literally one of the hardest players to predict this year. And I, I just don't know. Um, I mean, yeah. I, I want to have hope that he's better than he was last year. Um, but I don't know, man. He struggled so hard last year. It just didn't seem maybe, maybe it's this dead like thing that, you know, you're, you're speaking of and yeah, being, being at the top of the lineup is going to help him, you know, having, they still have good productive hitters behind him. JD Martinez, Devers, um, uh, Bogarts. Yeah. Bogarts. Right. So yeah, he'll, you know, the run scored will be, you have to guess better. Um, the RBI will probably go down. Well, but I don't know if they can go down from 68 <laughs> if he just produces slightly better than last year. I don't know. It's just, he's just a tough guy. Like I just kind of, I think it's going to be one of those guys where I just, I see him on the board. I'm going to go, nah, I'll just take the guy below him. If I need an outfielder, right. It's just, I don't think I want to deal with him. I'm not sure what, I just not sure what to do. Yeah. I, I, had Ben Benintendi last year, and I actually had him in 2018 in the same league, not as a keeper. I drafted him both years, and, and I kind of reached on him a little bit last year. Um, well, it, it ended up being a reach when I grabbed him because of his performance. And, and like I said, the slide here just tells the complete story. I mean, between him and Kepler, Kepler demolished him in everything. Um you know, everything that you really care about power all over the board, you know, runs over uh, way over. So, you know, obviously uh, the average was like the lone jumping, uh, jumping stat here. So I think that he can bounce back a little bit closer to 18. I don't think he's going to be as bad as he was last year. Uh, and again, obviously the injury had, had some, uh, effect on him too, but if he's, if he stays healthy all year long, um, I think they're going to need him to really step up with, uh, with bets gone now. And, and I, it might add some pressure initially, but I, I think if he, if he takes a hold of it, he can really run with it and, and get back closer to 2018. I don't know if he'll hit exactly that, but at least take a a better step in that direction. Yeah. All right. Well, let's finish things out here, Mike. Uh, All all great stuff here, man. Glad you can help out again. Let's finish it out. So we like to do one overvalued player each and one undervalued players each. And so our overvalued player, we start with, and this is a player who an outfielder who is currently being drafted higher then you would draft him. We'll let you go first. Um, so this guy for me is it's gonna be Whit Merrifield. You know, he's got that second base outfield eligibility. Mm-hmm. He's going right around top fifty. And, you know, he's a guy that yeah, he helps an average and yeah, he can steal the bases, but his stolen bases have only been declining over the past two years. He's a guy that I think is he's either thirty or he's turning thirty one soon. So he's getting up there in age, despite him only being in the league mm-hmm. for I think four or five years now. And, you know, I just, I don't think that he's a guy that you can take. Yeah, the the dual positional eligibility helps, but, you know, that's a lineup, the Royals lineup that, you know, they're they're a rebuilding team, so they're kind of stuck in the middle right now. You know, you do have Jorge Soler, like like we talked about before, but, you know, there's just not many options on the Royals, you know, to really help him, you know, around the lineup. And while the average can be great, I do think that there's just other players in that vicinity that, you know, that you should draft and that will help you in the long run. Like for example, Matt Olson is going right around there. And I know he's not an outfielder, but you know, first base is a desert this year. No, so, you know, might as well grab him perfect. instead of a guy that, you know, may steal less bases than last year. And, you know, yeah, he'll hit two ninety, three hundred, but that might be the only thing that you get from him. 
No, I love that pick, and I think we, uh, I think we actually touched on him in the second base preview too. So uh, I cannot agree more there. So AJ, what you got for overvalued? Overvalued. I, I am going with Danny Santana. All right. Um, I, I mean, you you called it out earlier about these one year wonders and. I mean, look, Santana's 29. He's been been in the bigs for a handful of years. Um, he's bounced kind of up and down between minors, you know, AAA and the majors, you know, every year really oh. since 2014, um, you know, back and forth, back and forth. He finally plays a full season last year. Uh, well, almost 130 games uh, in the bigs, you know, he mashed 28 homers and had 81 runs and RBIs each. Um, I mean, nice thing is that he steals bases. So we talked about how steals are very valuable. Um, and I think that's helping to drive his cost up. I mean, look, this, this guy barely hit 28 home runs throughout his entire career. Um, you know, if you take out his triple a, uh, experience in 2018 with the Braves where he had 16. But other than that, everything is single digits. You know, I just, I think it's a bit of smoke and mirrors with the power, probably partially because of the juice ball. Um, and, and I just, I'm not paying up for, for him based on that number that I don't see happening this year. I mean, I think he'll maybe hover around 20 again. If he yeah, gets there. There's also a risk that he isn't a full time player anymore. You know, exactly. They, they they announced that he's gonna start the year in center field, but um they they've got they've got other guys there too. So um yeah, I, I totally agree with you there. I've I've passed on him in every draft I've been in so far. So my guy is gonna be one of these, you know, up and coming prospects, rookies who Right now, all signs are that he's going to start the year with the team, but who really knows? It's and it's a guy that Mike you mentioned, is, and it's Luis Robert. Like this guy's an incredible talent. I'm not going to deny that, but 2020 redraft leagues are not the year to draft him. Not where he's going. He's going with some incredibly good players. Like I get it, he's got the talent. He could be a 25, 25 player easily. He could also be a 1550 player. He's a prospect. He's never swung a bat in the major leagues. I just have a tough time grabbing guys who haven't swung a bat in the majors yet and proven. We see guys, Mike Trout sucked when he first came up. Acuna was, you know, a great rookie season, but he struggled the first month or so. Like these guys take time to get adjusted to the game. Um, it's very rare that you see the guys just come in and just mash the ball right away and just take off. Will I take Robert on some teams? Maybe. Uh, but I need his ADP. I need his I need his draft value to drop a little bit more than it is. I think he's talented, but I'm not I'm not buying him with where he's going right now. All right. Mike, let's move on. Give us your undervalued player. Uh, so this is someone that, over years prior, has usually been a you know a pretty, pretty solid guy to draft for fantasy purposes. And uh, this year he's another guy similar to David Peralta that was injured last year and was kind of forgotten. And it's Justin Upton. You know he's a guy that has a good amount of power. You know like they brought Rendon in. You have Trout there. Possibility that Adele comes up. I I just think that it's it, it's. A lineup that really can only get better over the year mm -hmm. and you know it's not like upton was a guy that you know wasn't very helpful in fantasy you know he's got the power to hit 30 home runs you know 25 30 home runs you know and depending on where he hits in the order and depending on his health you know he could really have a great bounce back season and you know you're getting him relatively cheap and i just think that it's a no-brainer to grab him maybe even if you stash him on your bench and see what he does you know that's just an aging veteran on a good team that has a good track record, you know, I I think that, you know, why not toss the dart there and grab him? Dude, I, I don't have my draft up right now, but I snagged him in TGFBI and was like, I went, again, he's another one of those guys that I just kind of forgot about. 
And I think that's kind of what's happening is, you know, these systems, they, they draft, they pre-rank these guys and people just get, just get bought into it. And then the ADPs fall in, in flow with it. And he showed up on the draft board and I was like, no, no way. I, I was like, something's gotta be wrong with him. And I looked him up and he's like, no, nah, he's going to be healthy. I was like, okay, I, I'll take the upside at like 200 plus at this point. With, yeah, exactly. With yeah. with Upton, like it was a no brainer. I was like, oh my gosh, like this is incredible value here. So yeah, I I totally like I totally love that pick. But his ADP is climbing, by the way. Don't be surprised if it's not like top forty outfield, if not higher, before like the end of March. People are people are starting to remember who he is. Yeah, <laughs> I see it every day. His ADP as is climbing. they should. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, he's he burned me a couple years ago with his oh, yeah, super injury play and the injuries, problem. and it's like you don't want to drop him because someone's just going to sit on him and then right. reap the benefits, and you're going to be kicking yourself. So absolutely, I, I I like that pick a lot too. Um, so the guy I'm going with here is, and I'll probably totally butcher his name. Hopefully not. Um, it's Aristides Aquino. Um, yeah, Aristides. Uh, I I mean, I'll give it to you. I know who you're talking about. (laughs) This guy was huge last year when he came up at the end of the year for the Reds Mm -hmm. in 56 games. He had 225 plate appearances, 19 homers, 31 runs, 47 ribbies, and threw in seven stolen bases. So, like a month and a half. uh, Yeah, (laughs) I mean, he just was. Uh, phenomenal at the end of the year there. So I like this guy a lot. I think he's going to have some value. Um, I don't know if he's going to start the season yet with the Reds. Um, He's kind of had a bit of a rough spring so far. Um, But yeah, I mean, the power is totally legit. And, you know, he's only 25 years old. So big dude for the Reds. If, If they get him up early and he starts mashing again. I mean, he's going to be a, a heavy ad. So, I mean, what's the point? He's he's not necessarily free, but he's definitely a super late round flyer that yeah. that I'm definitely willing to take a, a shot on. And his ADP is dropping actually because he's struggled and they signed yeah. Castellanos and Senzel's there, and they got to find a place for him and things like that. So. Mm-hmm. And they signed the guy for yeah, it's Japan. crowded, but so, yeah, it's super crowded outfield. So yeah, I, I agree with you. He may not start the the year in Cincy, but he's a uh, he's a guy that yeah, maybe you don't draft him, but uh, you definitely like watch to make sure that you know as soon as he gets a call up, you'd be the first one on your waiver wire to grab him. Uh, yeah, because he's got he's got the talent for sure. So mine is going to be Marcel Ozuna, and he's going fairly high, but guys. NFBC right now, remember who I just talked about? Luis Robert. He's going behind him. He's going behind Jeff McNeil. He's going behind Jorge Soler, who we just kind of dogged a little bit. He's going behind Eddie Rosario. Guys, he's going one ahead of Trey Mancini. I know Mar- Marcelo Zuna did not have a fantastic season last year. You do realize he still hit 29 bombs. Stole 12 bases. Uh, only struck out 20% of the time. Yeah, batting average wasn't great, but I mean, his bad bit was 257. That's going to go back up. Like, come on. He's a way better hitter than that. He's playing with Atlanta this year. Better lineup. Cardinals offense was not that good last year. Um, you know, Matt Carpenter fell off a cliff and yeah. that really hurt that offense big time. So look, playing Atlanta, He's going to have all those great bats around him. I think Ozuna is up there and and should be drafted above, you know, Luis Robert. You know, right now, the the way I have it filtered on NFBC is from like mid-January or sorry, mid-February. So, you know, Staten's still up there, but that's obviously changed in the last couple of days, you know, just in the last couple of days. But I, I think he should be drafted in the in the in the low teens, maybe maybe around twenty twenty one range. Definitely above Robert. Like Robert hasn't swung a bat. Ozuna's a proven player who can easily outproduce, if not just as good as Robert. Don't 
overvalue these guys who are like one year wonders young. Like I know we all want the young new, you know, hot thing. Be careful with that. That's the McNeil. That's the Robert Um, Solaire big breakout one season. Take the steady with Ozuna. Sometimes it's okay. He's going to be good this year. So that is my pick. So, all right, Mike, that's it for the show. Um, why don't you let everybody know what you got in store for the rest of the preseason and let, and where they can find you on the internet, like Twitter and stuff. Uh, so for the rest of the preseason, I, I plan on writing, you know, a few more articles for the website, mainly, uh, players to avoid for fantasy six podcast. Nice. And, uh, you know, also, um, potentially even, uh, Hunting categories and you know my my take and opinion on that. Um, Perfect. And yeah, and if you want to reach me, you can find me on Twitter, and the handle is there on screen at Mike Salcedo One. Um, you know, just hit me up with any questions you have or anything, um, or any suggestions on what I could write for the website, and you know, any advice I can give to you, you know, I welcome it. I love giving advice, so I encourage nice, any uh, any and all questions. Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks, man. We uh, we really appreciate you coming on and uh, and chatting with us tonight. Not a problem. I actually uh, I had a great time. You know, I really enjoyed it. All right. Yeah. Us too, man. Uh, have a good night, and we will uh, we'll we'll make sure we get you on during the season again. Awesome. Sounds good. Have a good night, guys. All right. All right. See ya. Thanks, Mike. All right, AJ. That's it for the show. Um, I did want to point out the fact that I'm wearing the Nashville shirt. Um. You know, thoughts and prayers go out to the the victims of the the horrible tornado that went through that um, the city just a couple of nights ago. So, um, saw this in my drawer and was like, "Oh man, I got. I feel like I got to put that shirt on." I almost forgot I had it because you know we just went this past this past summer and I don't get to wear it very often. But um, yeah, it's uh, the images are just like, oh man, they're they're incredibly like sad. Yeah. So, uh, hopefully, you know. They raise enough money to to rebuild, and I'm sure they will. But um, yeah, definitely, definitely, uh, sad news there. All right, uh, that's all we got for the show, though. Uh, next week we're bringing on, I think, Jonathan Chan uh, to all do right. some some pitching, some pitching previews for us. Um, or actually, is it? Actually, it might be just. I thought it was Jonathan and Dennis. Maybe it's just Dennis. Uh, actually, yes, it's just Dennis. Um, not just Dennis, but sorry, I thought it was Jonathan. Yeah, because Dennis. Sosick, oh, whatever, it's just Dennis. <laughs> Dennis Sosick, uh, who's been on the That's show his many, comment, many times. Dennis, not mine. Um, sorry, I'm a jackass. Um, <laughs> anyway, looking forward to that. Is our last position preview. We'll be covering all the pitching topics. So um looking forward to that as we get closer to the start of the season. Excellent. Um, all right. Like talking pitchers. Uh speaking of pitchers, you can check out my fresh off the presses this year's Lucas Giolito article on fantasy six pack.net. Um it's been retweeted a handful of times as well. So all uh all two fifty, maybe two fifty one now, maybe two fifty two, climbing, climbing um of of my followers hopefully have seen it nice um <laughs> and yeah uh i will be working on the uh revamped closer chart uh, i'll be working on that again this year i uh, just want to change the tables around and and make it look a little little different than what we had last year so and you got another hopefully uh... i can yeah hopefully i can get back to that this weekend and and get that knocked up so we can post that next week well, you got, the, also, you got the this year's. I forget. This year's, I think it's Liam Hendricks and Will yep. Smith. It's just Liam Hendricks. So, I think is what we want. Yes, but yeah, so I got that'll the, be our uh, my follow up article as well. So I got the Jorge Soler article coming out. The this year's Jorge Soler coming out this coming Monday. I think um, that's an interesting one. It's hard to find guys that are going to re- reproduce what he did. <laughs> <laughs> That's an I got one right picture. here. His name is uh, Ar- Aristides Aquino. Mm. Write it down. <laughs> I might pass on that one. All right. That's Me all too. we got. See y'all later. Peace.